Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's project is going to be um, working with uh, formica laminate. I'm doing a whole series on formica laminate. As a matter of fact, if you want to uh, see how I do projects like this one here, this here is a waterfall table that I built on a different video. I'll leave a link for it in the uh, description on how to, if you want to build something like this, you can build it from scratch. Um, but today's video is going to be on uh, marking and cutting laminate, formica laminate. Okay, the first thing you need to, you want to learn how to do is you want to learn how to mark your formica so that you know how to cut it. So, uh, depending upon what color your, your material is, like let's say your material is, let's just hypothetically say you've got this one here. Well, if you use a pencil on this one here, like so, you can kind of see it, but it might be dark if you had low lighting or anything like that. If you use the black Sharpie on this type of a back, background, it does show up much better. So that's one example. Here's another example. It's a lighter background. You take your straight edge here and put that on and just use a carpenter's pencil you can see that line pretty good. And of course, when you use the black Sharpie, you can see that line very well as well. Now, now let's say that you don't want these lines for one reason or another. You can use paint thinner in an effort to uh, go ahead and remove those lines. So we'll just take some paper towel here put some paint thinner on there and that comes off and it does not damage your work. Also it takes off the pencil mark. So that's one. Here's the second one. And you can see that comes right off and it takes the pencil mark off and it takes off and it doesn't ruin the, the so the pencil plus the black sharpie and it doesn't ruin the what you're working with. So you can just use paint thinner for that. Also when you put your glue on, if you put glue on your your main surface and the glue is dried, I took some paint thinner uh, after glue that was on this for 24 hours, uh, did this, wiped it off and it, the glue came off no problem. So this is, uh, this this product works fine. I'm sure you could use acetone or other similar type um, thinning agents with, for solvents would work just as fine. But this, I have, I had paint thinner, so I'm using it because it's just it's easy and convenient, and it's probably not that much, that expensive. I don't know. I haven't bought it in a while. Okay, now let's say you want to cut laminate, like into strips like this, as an example, because you're you're doing either testing or you you want to uh, do an edge profile here. Well, when you do your Let's say you wanted to put an edge, you're building an edge profile for this. You, what you can do, if you can use a tape measure or just take your substrate here, put it over like this and have it overhang a certain amount and then just come on this side and just say, okay, we'll cut this right about, right about there. Then we'll just take our speed square or any type of a square, put that on there and then just mark that out like so. After you do that, what you can do when you want to do your cutting is you can cut this a couple of different ways. If it's just a small piece like this and you're going to you're going to trim this out anyways, you could use this pair of scissors right here. Let me show you. that produces a little bit of a rough edge but that absolutely cuts your formica and it's a reasonable edge anyways I mean it's pretty good you could use tin snips like this here put that right in there and just cut your piece and I'll just finish this one off like so okay and you can see what those cuts look like you know they're they're a reasonable uh, cuts so uh, it'll have no problem taking this piece here putting it on your work this is a short piece but I'm just 
giving you an example. Okay, so with your piece, this is shorter than the substrate, so this is not going to be a real life example. But you can see how I have it overhanging all the way around so that if it was the right length, this would be perfectly fine. So you need to know how to cut your material. You need to know how to mark your material. First you got to mark it. Then you have to cut it. Then you can start to apply it to your project. Now in my case, we have this right here, which is a good long strip. And I want to, for my first project, I want to put it on here. So uh, I could, like I said, I could use a tape measure, or what I'll do is I'll just simply uh, use the piece itself as the as the marking aid. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm overhanging right there. I'm overhanging right here. All I have to do is take my my my, my snips that I know will cut this, and then just go ahead and cut it. And I don't have to have a perfect edge because I'm going to create that perfect edge with the um, the router when I get to it. So here is a, the perfect piece that we can use right for our edge. So That uh, technique is producing tearing and I don't like it. So I am uh, not going to continue on with that. I started getting a tear right there. And I know I have some leeway, but I don't have all the leeway in the world uh, for this type of activity. So I'm going to uh, switch gears. I'm gonna change over to a circular saw. Here's the circular saw that I'm going to use. You can see the blade isn't anything really special but I did protect the uh, the base plate here with um, some masking tape so it won't scratch the laminate. Okay, that's going to conclude this video. Please click on like. I need those likes. And subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I'm going to catch you on the flip side.